if you like our global news videos like this one, then be sure to subscribe to the channel and ring the bell. We're currently competing to overtake our sister channel sub counts, and we're getting really close to TLDR US, so thanks for your support. Kurdistan. It might not be a country you've thought about much before, but it's certainly a contentious one. In fact, it's not even fully agreed where it is or where its borders end. So in this video, we're going to take a look at the country, where it is, who lives there, and whether it stands a chance of becoming an officially recognised state anytime soon. So, the first thing to say is that these days, when people say Kurdistan, they could be referring to two different things. Kurdistan region, the autonomous province in Iraq, or what we might call Greater Kurdistan, a hypothetical country claimed by Kurdish nationalists. The Kurdistan region is a territory in northern Iraq, claimed by the Kurds in 1991 after the Iraq war. It was recognised by the Iraqi government in Baghdad in 2005, after the fall of Saddam Hussein, and in 2017 held a referendum in which 93% of votes were cast in favour of independence. Greater Kurdistan, which is what this video is going to be about, is a roughly defined geocultural territory where Kurds make up a majority or have a historical claim to. This is typically comprised of five areas. Southeastern Turkey, northern Iraq, northwestern Iran, northern Syria, and a little bit of Armenia and Azerbaijan. It's worth noting that different Kurdish nationalist organisations advocate for different Greater Kurdistans, occasionally extending all the way down Iran to the Persian Gulf. Broadly though, Greater Kurdistan maps onto Kurdish populations in the region, with a couple of exceptions. For example, there's a Kurdish population in central Turkey that's rarely included, because it would either require extending Kurdistan well into Turkey, or a Kurdish enclave in the country, neither of which feel especially feasible. Anyway, the reason that Greater Kurdistan's borders are a bit vague is that Greater Kurdistan, which we'll refer to as Kurdistan from now on, has never actually existed as a recognised state. Throughout history, there have been various Kurdish autonomies, but they've been a fair bit smaller than today's Kurdistan. Perhaps the first example comes in 1639, when the Zoheb Treaty between the Ottomans and Safavids created an autonomous region for the tribes between the Zagros Mountains and the Tigris River, although they didn't call them Kurds and the area wasn't known as Kurdistan. The first time any territory was officially known as Kurdistan came in 1846, when the Ottoman Empire created the Kurdistan Eyalet, which lasted until 1867. Since then, many territories have been called Kurdistan for brief periods of time. There was the Kurdish state in 1918, the Kingdom of Kurdistan from 1921 to 1924, and the Soviet-backed Red Kurdistan from 1923 to 1929, to name just a few, but none have looked anything like the Greater Kurdistan proposed by Kurdish nationalists today. It doesn't help that the Kurds also aren't a particularly well-defined ethnic group, Broadly, the Kurds are groups of tribespeople from Eastern Asia Minor and the Zagros Mountains who are not Turkish, Arabic or Persian speaking. But like all ethnic groups, they've diverged over time. Today, Kurds in different regions follow a whole variety of religions and even speak different languages. Which is why smaller subgroups like all of these are now considered distinct from the Kurds, even though they used to be considered Kurdish. Kurds also differ in their politics. Kurds in Iraq have their own autonomous province, and Kurds in Syria have curved out a de facto autonomy in the north, which they call Rojava. In Turkey, the Kurdistan Workers' Party, otherwise known as the PKK, has been fighting a war against the Turkish state since 1984, but they gave up on the idea of Kurdish independence in the early 2000s, and now just want some sort of autonomy within Turkey. Iranian Kurds, who make up about 10% of the population, have a strong nationalist sentiment, but they haven't really got anywhere since Ayatollah Khomeini declared a holy war against nationalist Kurds in 1979, before assassinating the leader of the Democratic Party of Kurdistan in 1989 and then his successor in 1992. 
Basically then, Kurds in all of these different countries have their own different political objectives, which is why no contemporary Kurdish political party has made explicit demands for the establishment of a greater Kurdistan. You get the point though, Kurdistan's borders are difficult to define because it's never had an established state before, it doesn't track a well-established ethnic group, and no contemporary Kurdish political party has explicitly called for its creation. So where does this map of Kurdistan even come from? Well, the first officially proposed map of Kurdistan came after the collapse of the Ottoman Empire post-World War I at the 1919 Paris Peace Conference. Kurdish delegates proposed this map, which is only a bit smaller than the Greater Kurdistan region proposed by today's Kurdish nationalists. In the end, the Treaty of Sevres said that the Kurds could have their own smaller autonomous region within Turkey, and if they voted for independence within a year, then they could form their own Kurdish state. Unfortunately for the Kurds though, Turkey didn't like this treaty. And after winning the Turkish War of Independence, Turkey successfully renegotiated the Treaty of Lausanne, which supersedes the previous treaty, and returned Kurdistan to Turkey, with no means for independence. However, the question of Kurdish statehood came up again after World War II, when Kurdish delegates in the 1945 Conference of San Francisco suggested that Kurdistan ought to run all the way down to the Persian Gulf, despite the fact that there weren't actually that many Kurds in western Iran. It seems that this could be the inspiration of most of today's maps of Greater Kurdistan, although it's worth noting that most Kurdish nationalist organisations no longer claim the section of western Iran which reaches down to the Persian Gulf, because, well, no Kurds live there, and there's no chance that Iran would ever agree to it anyway. So, that's Greater Kurdistan. Is there any chance of it becoming an actual state anytime soon? Well, realistically, no. The Kurds have been an oppressed minority in every state they found themselves, and there's no realistic chance that the governments of Iraq, Syria, Iran, or Turkey decide to U-turn and grant the Kurds their own state. But perhaps the more interesting question is not whether Kurdistan will become a country, but whether it should become a country. As we mentioned earlier, the borders of Greater Kurdistan are a bit questionable. They include non-Kurdish majority areas after rule, but that's sort of true with every border. It's basically impossible to draw borders that perfectly map ethnicity, because, well, ethnicities aren't perfectly separable. It's also notable that every large ethnic group within the region, Arabs, Persians and Turks, all enjoy, or at least have enjoyed in the past, their own ethnic majority states. Only the Kurds have been a permanent minority. We should be clear, this isn't TLDR advocating for Kurdistan, it's just a fact that the Kurds are alone in being a permanent minority in the region. So what do you think should happen next? Should the Kurds have their own Kurdistan? And if so, what should the future of the country be? And what should the international community, and your country specifically, do about it? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Also, be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to be notified every time we release a new video. Special thanks to our Patreon backers who make videos like this one possible. And if you want to see your name at the end of videos, then you too can back us on Patreon. The link to that is in the description.